Thank you for joining us again here on windsurfdudes.com. If you recall, the last few videos that we've been working on have been dealing with Microsoft failover clustering. We went over some of the terminology. We took the time to prepare the two hosts that will be uh, joined to our cluster, um, set up the network, some shared storage, and so forth. And now what we're actually going to do is we are going to install the cluster service itself on these two nodes so that we can create our failover cluster. So I just want to get into this. Um, before we start, I wanted to say thank you to all the great questions that we've been getting from our viewers and our readers. Um, you've given me some really great ideas for some tutorials, uh, maybe some more basic stuff so that it can be applicable to small and home offices, things like that. So I just wanted to thank you to everybody who's been writing in with the awesome questions and comments. Um, moving along, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our server manager on both systems. So you just should, this should look familiar by now. If you remember, we were in here managing our disks. So what we're going to do is we are going to go to features. I'll wait for this to populate here. And we will add feature. And what we are going to do here is add failover clustering. You can see it here. I'm just going to select next and install. And as you can see this part of the process is very simple. So we're going to do the same thing. Just right click add feature or it could use this option right over here. And we are going to add failover clustering to our second node. And be nice if they were and install and it is going to give us a warning that automatic updates are not enabled but um, that's okay for right now so close this out here and wait for this to finish on our second node and I just wanted to say thank you to all of those um, who have been checking out our sponsors um, uh, seeing what they have to offer helps keep the videos going so if you do appreciate the videos please do uh, check that out it's much appreciated okay and we have the second one done here close alright so now we have both of the clustering installed on um, our hosts here so what we're gonna do is on our first node we're gonna go to administrative tools and the failover cluster manager. And we're just going to select this here. And it's going to add that in. Minimize these here. Okay, so what we see is we're actually presented with some pretty straightforward options. Um, we don't have any clusters installed right now. I'm just going to open that up on our on our second node. Um, and what we're going to do is you can see that there is an option here to create a cluster. So you can either do it from this menu option here, or you can do it from the failover cluster manager here. And I'm guessing you could do it from here as well. So we'll just use any one of those options to create a new cluster. Okay. And it just opens up the wizard. And we're going to select next. So now what we're going to do is we are going to select the server names that we are going to add to our failover clusters. So if you remember, these are W2K8R2. Okay, and CLU01. And it's dot WST. It goes by a little faster. Let me make sure I, I have it typed in properly here. 2K8, 2. Okay, must have fat fingered that first time there. So it's going to verify that first server. And we're going to do the same thing with the second node. Let's 
zero two for this node. So there we go. So now these are the two nodes that we are going to add in to our cluster, um, which will work in unison to provide failover and, and high availability. So now we've added both of those. We're going to select next. Um, and I would recommend doing this. We are going to run our configuration and validation tests. They don't take too long, so and it's good to just get those results. So it's going to test to determine whether the configuration of the servers and the attached storage is set up correctly for failover. So this is good to do. Um, it'll give you an idea of everything, if everything is set up properly. So now it's going to go through and it's going to start running these tests and it's going to tell you here all the tests that it is going to run. And I do recommend actually actually doing this. While we're waiting for this to go through and finish, um, <clears throat> any, of the, any of the videos that you may have questions on, uh, some of you have already began kind of sending in emails or posing questions uh, about how you would apply some of these things in your own environment. Um, I really do welcome those questions. It gives me food for thought and it gives me some ideas on how to have videos in the future that might be more applicable to the audience. So please just go through and uh, send us some comments or some feedback uh, through the website. Um, there is a contact uh, form there and that will go directly to me myself. Sometimes it takes me a little while but I try to get everybody's emails uh, responded to in about a week. Um, that's by the time I have a new video. And um, again, thank you for all those who have been sending me comments. Hopefully uh, you feel I've <laughs> responded to them adequately. And uh, let's just finish watching this looks like we're gonna be good for the most part if this ends up running through too long I'll skip to the end but I think we're I don't think it should take too long okay so this did take a few minutes um, <clears throat> so if you notice that it skipped through everything did pass we're gonna review our report and just to make sure that we have no issues so if you followed us uh, along with us in the second video ask me later. If you followed along with us in the second video, um, you should get this clean report. Okay. Now again, your attached storage is going to be a little bit different, but as you can see, we've gone through and we've had successes on everything that we've had. So this is a good indication. Um, if you do want support uh, via Microsoft for your cluster, then you do want to make sure that you are using a standard and approved configuration and it will validate all these tests. Um, it will actually work even if you get some warnings but you might not get some support through Microsoft. So, uh, Alright now so what we're going to do is we are actually going to give a name to this cluster. So what we're going to do is we're just going to call it when serve toots make sure I type that right C L U zero one. That's just what we're gonna call this cluster here. Okay. And you can see that it's assigning um, the nodes. This is the cluster name. Uh, and now now this wizard is actually gonna go through and create the cluster which will include both of these hosts. As you're going through this, you might notice a, a little bit of difference if you are used to building clusters in the past. Before, um, you would actually have to do a couple different things. One, you would shut down node 2. Um, and then you would bring node 2 up and you would add it to the cluster. Also, um, you if you're familiar with clustering, you are noticing that we are not creating any sort of um, Active Directory domain accounts to manage this cluster. Those are two things that are particularly different um, in clustering 2008 R2. The domain accounts are made automatically uh, when you do the cluster install and if node 2 in this case is online it should be added automatically. Okay so it's telling us here 
we have the two nodes and again um, you could actually have several nodes you could have more than two um, in a Microsoft cluster um, it went through it gives us a list of everything that we have done here it tells us what was done on each of the nodes the computer objects things like that so this is a report and honestly I would recommend printing this off and saving it the more you document about your environment the easier your life will be so, okay we're gonna finish here okay now as you can see here it's gonna take a second just to warm up okay, let's see what our two warnings are make sure there's nothing serious here Okay, this is for network name resolution and I believe we will be okay um, because we are using dynamic DNS the first time that these two hosts probably tried to go out and contact it the DNS had not updated yet so that should be all right okay now let's just take a little quick tour here and I want to refresh and make sure let's just do manage a cluster see if it'll find it automatically okay so now as you can see we have this cluster on both nodes here right and again we have the two warnings this is uh, the current host server okay and we have all of these options down here you can see the nodes and again this is node 2 right we did this install on node 1 but all of this information we didn't have to go through and add this cluster node to the cluster like you had to do previous so we can see that both of these nodes are up we have some disks available um, the quorum disks and available storage so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at these resources okay take a look at our networks and we have internal alright so so what we're going to do now is we want to make it easier to identify what our network adapters are you can see we have cluster network one two and three and just as how we went through and we labeled appropriately our network adapters here we want to do the same thing so we understand so we have heartbeat iSCSI and then the windserve toots that's our domain network and we want to mimic this here so that we can easily identify various resources in our cluster so we know that this 10 dot network this is our internal our domain our windserve toots network so we're going to go rename windserve toots so that we can identify that this is that heartbeat 10.10.11 .10 that's that heartbeat network so we're going to name that okay and then this should be our iSCSI network and surely enough it's the 192.168 network so we're going to rename that rename iSCSI so now we have all of our networks properly labeled okay Let's just make sure see if this was and you can see that these changes have populated over to our second cluster node let's take a look at the storage real quick remember we talked about the quorum disk um, and you know this is labeled here and you can see it's the one gigabyte disk it has an immense it's only being you know not even about four percent used um, the quorum is actually very small so this is a disk that is currently in use as you can see it's the disk witness for the quorum and then we have an available storage disk okay and this is the disk it's 60 gigabytes in size this is the disk that we will actually be using to install our SQL server on just want to show you a couple other things um, so services and applications um, if you notice here we actually do not have any services or applications running so even though you've set up a cluster the cluster in and of itself is not being used for anything at the moment so if you wanted to set up um, a new s service you would you could either come over here 
under services and applications or you could right click here and you configure a service or application and then you would be presented again with another wizard and you can see there's a DFS name server a DHCP server things like that um, that you could install um, other service and let's say you just wanted to test something um, you would be able to just create a generic service generic application and you might have noticed that we got an error here um, if you want to install the clustered service you would have to have these roles installed on your on your nodes so that's just a heads up um, alright so this is kind of now our cluster set up this is a good place to kind of break because what we're gonna do in our next video is actually go through and install MSSQL on this cluster here so uh, for companies that are really looking for high availability and their data is really really important and they need to have data redundancy and data availability well technically it's not data redundancy um, but availability um, this is really an excellent way to do that uh, and especially if you're in a virtualized environment if you already have two physical um, virtual nodes you can put one cluster node on one physical vhost and the other cluster node on the other physical vhost so this really does provide an excellent way for companies with a relatively decent cost to have um, quite good uh, high availability so again thank you for watching this week here on windserve2.com uh, Again, if you appreciate the videos, do check out our, our, our little ads at the bottom. It helps, keeping, it helps keep the, the videos coming. And again, if you have any questions, comments, please do send them in. Thank you to everybody who's been sending in the questions and comments so far. It's really greatly appreciated. Um, and thank you again for watching this week here on windserve.com.